Just drop. A few months back, I did a video that listed the best multiplayer games for the Super Nintendo, and those games were mostly really popular, so the point of this video is to mention a few that aren't so popular. Not going into huge detail or anything, just showing off some footage. I'll do five co-op games and five versus games. First is Wild Guns, a game that's gotten some notoriety in recent years for being somewhat rare and really freaking expensive. Unlike some other really high-priced games though, this one delivers in spades. Wild Guns is an arcade-style fixed-view shooting gallery game that's perfect for two players. Sometimes I find with games like this though, the cross here either moves way too fast or way too slow, but it feels perfect in this game though. So while I don't think it's worth $200, Wild Guns remains an excellent multiplayer game. Soldiers of Fortune, also known as Chaos Engine, is your classic top-down Smash TV style gameplay with tons of weapons, power-ups, and explosions. If you remember a while back, I did a video about True Lies. Soldiers of Fortune essentially has the same guts and same design as that game, only with multiplayer. And it's kind of more futuristic-y, I guess? There's 16 levels to crank through, though, and you can buy your own weapons as well. Next is Jurassic Park Part 2, The Chaos Continues. This is a classic run-and-gun style game that always lends itself well to multiplayer. While the premise of the game, uh, doesn't exactly fit the premise of the movie, who cares? The game is pretty good. There's 10 levels that you can play in any order, but there's no save feature or password system, so be wary of that. For shoot 'em ups, there's Strike Gunner STG. It's a solid game that's a bit on the easy side, but the quality sound design makes it a very satisfying game to play. There's 15 special weapons, everything from a plasma shield to heat sinking missiles to photon torpedoes. More importantly, this game serves as a good example of something that's kind of drab if you're playing by yourself, but it's more fun with a second player. Super Ninja Boy is another very good example of that. It's an RPG with battle mechanics of a beat em up. So it's got the usual random battle stuff, only the battles pull you into a side-scrolling mode where you do the usual punch-kick stuff. Sounds cool, right? It kind of is, but the single-player mode is just so dang slow. With a second player, the game is much more fun, and definitely worth checking out. Now onto versus games. Street Racer is very much a Mario Kart clone, although instead of launching projectiles, you basically just punch the shit out of everybody else. It's a little bit like Road Rash, but on carts. There's all sorts of different modes, like the Rumble mode, which is exactly what you'd expect, and a Soccer mode, which is pretty funny. Micro Machines is a different kind of racing game, going with a top-down view, where you race as a tiny car, or a hovercraft, or a helicopter. The track is super slippery, so it's easy to knock each other off the track entirely, so many curses are sure to be shouted. It's a nice change of pace from kart racing, or arcade-style racing. For fighting games, if you're burnt out on the classics, like Street Fighter 2 and Killer Instinct, then check out Weapon Lord. It's a solid fighting game that slipped through the cracks over the years, which is kind of odd because, believe it or not, this game was on the cover of Nintendo Power once upon a time. While the animation might not be the most fluid, the character design and artwork is crazy and unique, and each character has at least 9 or 10 special moves. Tetris Battle Gaiden is the usual Tetris style game, but between two players, the next piece you'll see on display is First Come First Serve, which makes it pretty interesting. There's also special pieces that trigger spells that either make it easier for you, or worse for the other player. Lastly, there's Pieces. On the surface, it's just solving a puzzle, literally, and the goal is to solve it faster than your opponent. But what makes this game fun is all the special items that either help you or screw with your opponent, like freezing their cursor or inverting their controls. That's freaking great. This game will absolutely bring out your competitive side. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.